from the Mams Cave, and in today's video we're going to be showing you how to make an arrow gun out of a Daisy variable pump pellet rifle. Now the one that you saw in the last video was this one, the uh, Powerline 880S, and perfect platform to do it on. You can get these for right around forty dollars, and uh, I have changed the the valve system a little bit to kind of suck it into the gun a little closer, and this makes it so that uh, you can put your smaller tanks on there as well as a full size 20 ounce CO2 tank. So perfect setup. It works really, really good. On today's build, however, we're going to choose just a little different platform. It's still the Daisy variable pump. What I'm building on, on a, uh, a Winchester XS77 platform. And the reason I did this is just, it's all black, looks cool. And it did come with a, a, a better scope than the, the Powerline did, but I still had to change it out. I didn't really like the clarity of the scope that came with it, so I just put on a, another type of scope. And I used a riser to uh, make that happen. All right, so let's go over some safety tips. Just a little uh, quick note before we get on the build so that when you, when you get yours built, you, you can be safe and you know what you're doing. Okay, the shooting procedure is you load an arrow. Okay. And then you cock the gun. And then when you're ready to shoot, you load the chamber with air. Now I'm inside, so I'm going to take the arrow off. But then you aim, take aim, and fire. Now if you forget to cock the gun and you try to open the valve and load and load your chamber with air and and you're uh, not pointed at and you're pointed at something that you don't want to be shooting you'll end up shooting the gun on accident and uh, we don't want that to happen uh, you accidentally shooting something or somebody that you are not intending to do so anyway so that's just a little safety note I want you guys to be safe and uh, I want you to have a lot of fun with this gun. So let's get on to the build. The first step is to disassemble the pellet rifle. Take the screws out of the left and right forearm and place them to the side. Remove the barrel shroud, pump handle, and piston. Now remove the pump piston from the pump handle. This is easily done by removing the pin. Take the rest of the screws out to further disassemble the rifle. Continue to take the gun apart. Be careful with the safety button, as it likes to come apart easily, but is hard to put back together. Note, when you take the gun apart, lay out the parts in a way that will help you reassemble the gun later. Pull off the piston sleeve, and it will reveal the compression chamber. We must take this off by removing the pin and set it in the discard pile with the barrel shroud and pump handle. Now we are going to alter this piece. I'm calling it a chassis, for a lack of a better word. So take it and flatten this retainer out on an anvil with a flat punch. Now you will see the reason for this further in the video. Now it's time for the real hack. Warning, this will void any and all warranties. We need to remove the pin from the piston and set the pin and metal part in the discard pile. Also these parts come very oily, simply wipe them off. Take the o-ring off the piston so we don't damage it. Set it aside, we will need it later. The piston rod will no longer be needed, so cut it off from the piston. For this next part, wrap the piston in electrical tape so that it won't be damaged in the vise. Now mark the center with a center punch and drill a pilot hole as straight and as square as you can. Now use an 11 32nd inch drill bit and drill out the piston head. Get it again as straight and as square as you can. It's very important. You will now need a 1 8 inch pipe tap. Carefully tap the piston. Now for the valve assembly parts list. You will need one CO2 tank adapter, one eighth inch close nipple, one eighth inch 90 degree elbow, then a one and a half inch nipple, followed by an eighth inch by quarter inch coupling to a quarter inch ball valve, another eighth inch to quarter inch coupling, a two inch eighth inch pipe, 
which will thread onto our valve, which will then go into our valve sleeve. For this next part, you will need thread lock or super glue and two part putty epoxy. Most epoxies will work. Glue the piston to the two inch pipe. Now mix up some putty epoxy. Push it into the sleeve, leaving three quarters to an inch exposed. Now fill the void with the putty epoxy, making sure the pipe is centered in the sleeve. Now using the super glue or thread lock, glue the valve assembly together. And make sure everything is super tight. It should look something like this. Please note that the putty epoxy and thread glue needs to sit overnight to cure properly. Then reassemble the gun, leaving off the foregrips. Make sure that you get everything back in place and the screws secure. Slide the valve assembly into place until it seats. Then drill a hole in the chassis and into the valve assembly, but do not drill into the 8th inch pipe. Then screw in a self-tapping screw. This is important as it will keep the valve assembly from turning into a rocket. Take the foregrips and sand off 1 8 inch on the top of the foregrips. If you don't have a sander, then use a file or something similar. Reinstall the foregrips, then we will add black duct tape to the top of the gun and trim off the excess. Now onto the arrows. Install a target tip into the arrow and tighten it into a vise. Then heat around the insert and pull the arrow off. Now cut off the knocks a half inch from the feathers. Measure the arrows to 20 inches and cut off the excess. Sand everything up nice and clean. Glue the inserts back into the arrows using super glue. They may need to be cleaned to fit back into the arrows. Alright guys, you are now done. You can add a scope, a quiver, or any other accessory that you may 